Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So starting with the news analysis for 21st of November. So we've been seeing the governor or the state ke chief minister ke beat me issues chal rahe hain. We've been seeing it is important to uphold the constitutional morality. So Supreme Court again says ke governor cannot withhold the repassed bills. So this we mentioned yesterday also ki once the governor sends the bills back to the state assembly or state assembly fir se unhi same bills ko pass karke agar governor ko send karti hai to ab governor ke pass koi power nahi hai to withhold the assent. Governor has to give the assent to those repassed bills. So this needs to be made very clear and this is mentioned in the constitution also. So in this case, there is no power of the governor's discretionary powers. We have recently seen that in Tamil Nadu, mein 10 bills were recent back by the governor to the state assembly. So our CJ has to say that these bills have been pending since January 2020. So it's been you can say, more than three years. So the governor took action only after we issued notice in this matter. So even Supreme Court has to intervene in order to ensure that governors are taking timely actions. So why should governors want parties to move the Supreme Court to start taking the steps? So they need to adhere to the constitutional provisions upholding the constitutional morality. Article 200 is important in this context. And these are important areas around this. Then China is the biggest security anxiety for India and Australia. Why we are using this word anxiety and not security threat? So if anyone wants to speak upon this, ki security anxiety kyu hai China hamare liye? Because the situation with China is not clear and it is also playing power games. Yes, matlab China ke paas proper strategy, a uniform pattern is not visible here. So that is why it is an anxiety and things are uncertain as far as China's actions or reactions to a situation is concerned. So that is why... And there is another area. Hai. First is, uh, we are not concerned about the Chinese direct attack on our sovereignty. This is not one, but in China, the rule of the use of economic debt trap policy or even uh, influencing the neighborhood. So, this is a different pattern of unka strategy. This is anxiety. Haan, ek 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 saad direct saad direct hota hai. Nee, India is direct bhi ho sakta because we are sharing the land border also. So, there are two types of threats in India. Ke case mein. Direct or indirect. Then... So Uttar Kashi, maybe look at this situation. So Uttar Kashi rescue teams managed to install the six inch pipe to send the food. Matlab abhi wohi, short term measures hi le rahe, uh, in order to ensure ki food is made available and the people they are able to survive and fight those circumstances. So this is there. Food materials administration would send the food materials if we talk about the role of DM in this situation to the trapped workers. So government to bear the expenses of this. So it's been almost more than one week. The situation remains the same. So vertical rescue tunnel has reached the basically machine of, of the Satlu Jal Vidyut Nigam. So indigenous machine used kare for the vertical rescue tunnel. So that again, tunnel may or collapses of an adekne so we are having again foreign experts, Arnold Dix, to inspect the tunnel collapse site in Uttarkashi. So international tunneling expert is being called to look for a solution. So, Jamdani Sari is Hame Konsi state similitiam. So, this you can answer, search and answer it. Crafted Jamdani Saris from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Okay. So, this is from Bangladesh.
So fact check units have been created basically to deal with the problem of misinformation or fake news on social media. So this is one aspect. Yeah, we are seeing ambiguity basically. Ki aap kaise determine karoge ya kaise aap classify karoge ko information fake hai it is uh, you know spreading rumors. So there is no proper and fixed and discrete definition for that. So that is one ambiguous area here. So in the context of the union government we are talking about ki PIB would be the fact check unit yeah, separate uh, unit would be created under PIB uh, as far as the information which basically is not basically directly related to the union government is concerned. So you have a case against fact check unit here we see Madras High Court denies to await the Bombay High Court ruling. So Madras High Court decided to await the Bombay High Court's decision case filed here. Center's decision to establish OKUC okay, Cooper the cases there ki jo center mein abhi hum changes kar rahe around formation of a fact check unit under PIB. So directorate of information and public relations one institutional authority is here. Social media cell in this particular directorate is present. And this would be created under the Information Technology Act of 2000. So fake news ko counter karne ke liye, this is one remedial step that we are working upon. Yeah, हमारे पास अभी कोई ऐसा app है जैसे chat GPT है जो कि source trace कर पाए किसी भी information का. No, I don't think so. We have an app like this. And even chat GPT आप कैसे कह रहे हो कि source trace कर सकते हैं information का? For example, open source है chat GPT कोई भी use कर सकता है. तो उसी तरीके से जैसे कोई भी हम information डाल रहे हैं उसका वो source हमें दे दे. ऐसा कोई app भी है. नहीं तो are you sure कि chat GPT हमें source बता देता है information का जो वो मैं provide कर रहा है नहीं नहीं मैं ये नहीं बोल रही कि वो source बता देता है वो हमें जैसे information देता है उसी model पे similar model पे क्या कोई no I don't think so we have any such type of app as for my knowledge So disaster may we talk about fire incidences they are increasing. So recently we saw Jammu and Kashmir mein Dal Lake pe there was again a fire incident where a houseboat catched to fire. Yahan pe we are seeing uh, another kind of incident at Vishakapatnam Harbour. 45 boats have been gutted in fire. So fire safety around licensing is very important and ensuring that inflammable material is not carried. Even in railways also, we've talked about ki fire safety incidents can be prevent. So that's important and uh, definitely, uh, you know, availability of fire extinguishers and jo dry drills, mock drills, karna, that's important. Plus, uh, uh, when we talk about the fire stations, so they need to actively, you know, whether take the help of technology in terms of rob robustness in terms of the response time that they take. So we can have more number of fire stations specifically more closely located to the industrial areas also. So jo, again, thori vulnerable locations and we can have more number located over there. So here you can see Eastern Naval Command, HPCL, Vizac, Steel Plant, they joined the firefighting operations as well. So talking about employment challenge. So firstly, in the context, maybe we talk about employment challenge. Uh, we are talking about the skills match, the skills mismatch. So yeah, basically this topic is in news because we saw these, you know, 70 hours work in one week. This was again proposed by Naira and Murthy. So here, when we talk about employment challenge, the context of India, so skills mismatch is one problem where we are seeing that the skilled jobs create ki jari hai and the skills of the labor force, they do not match. So because of that, we are seeing high unemployment because of this main reason. And apart from this, when we talk about output demand and labor, so Talking specifically in economics and schemes and revolution, ke time se agar baat kare in economics, we know output jo hai, that is determined by aggregate demand. Jitni demand hai, uske according to output ya manufacturing ya production activity ki jati according to Keynes. 
John Maynard Keynes. So, which is the demand for the total volume of the goods and services produced in the economy. So, demand for the labor hai, that is also entirely dependent upon the aggregate demand for goods and services hai in the economy. So, these things are directly related. And there is no demand for labor independent of the demand for the goods. So it is not independent of that. So demand for labor be demand of goods and services ke upar hi dependent hai. So things are not working in you know, basically segregation. So firms are guided by the profit motive, we know. And they will employ more labor only if there is increased demand for their products. So this is a very simple thing. And role of demand for the goods and services in determining the demand for the labor may be seen in the layoffs in the tech sector globally at the beginning of this year as well. So this is one example where we see this. So even in case of Google and Amazon also, they have also fired a number of people. Um, they hired during the COVID-19 pandemic when the demand for their products, it was high due to lockdown. So this is directly related to the demand. And... Germany or Japan ke agar hum baat kare in the post-war years, so actually nothing demonstrates the role of demand for labor services being a crucial de determinant of the hours worked than the history of these economies. So basically, uh, malab, this is not a universal thing across the countries. So in case of Germany and Japan after, you know, when we talk about the Second World War, so we are seeing ki jo demand for labor services, thi, malab, demand for labor tha, that became a crucial determinant of the hours worked than the history of these countries. So firstly, it is not dependent upon how things have been historically. The current situation, hai, it is all dependent upon that. And apart from this, the economies, they were pulverized by the relentless bombing. So this is during the war years. Apart from this, uh, Europe had been uh, confined to the private enterprises. The revival would surely have taken for, basically it has taken far longer when talk about the recovery in Europe. And... The case of South Korea. So going by the case study of South Korea, though it was not mentioned by Naramuti and other company that saw long working hours in this period was South Korea. So even South Korea, may we saw people work, working for longer number of hours. So however, basically, you know, relating this thing to Jun Narayan Muthi Sarnayek as a reform proposed. Kiya tha. So some of its features are similar to those that had prevailed in Germany and Japan back then, but it too was recovering from a war. South Korea ki garam baat kare. And there was an additional dimension in Korea, though a dictatorship that saw the command of the able-bodied men to work in the countryside on large-scale projects or preparing the land. So basically, South Korea, mein, kind of again, thoda baut, we can say ki a stronger political hand was also there, which was you know influencing all these things and economics and labor demand or labor supply. Kaha pe labor would be working more. So economic strategies in India, ke agar hum baat kare, to does it mean ki there is an iron law of the market pinning us down helplessly to high unemployment through low aggregate demand in India? So because we starting mein baat kare thi ki India mein there is direct linkage between uh, aggregate demand and the demand for labor. So India mein agar low aggregate demand hai, to iski wajah se obviously that would create more unemployment because labor demand bhi kam ho jayegi. So this is not actually the case. 100% we can't say basically that this case hai, iski wajah se hi unemployment in India mein zyada hai. So there are two strategies economic policy. Uh, here can attempt. So as a solution, those strategies kya ho sakti hai? The first is to use global market or world demand to grow the domestic mm -hmm. economy because India may be all, um, you know, often say ki Indian economy jo hai, consumption-led economy hai. So consumption demand agar zyada hogi, then again, jo demand ya for jo output production hoga jis scale pe, wo bhi increase ho jayega. Then again, jo firms hai, unke demand for labor, that would also increase. So not just limiting ourselves to the local demand, we need to also you know, work according to how export demand is functioning. So global market demand is also important. But India ke jo goods hai, that would have to be globally competitive for that. If globally our goods are competitive, then obviously our goods ki global demand will be reduced. So again, this is a very simple thing. So experience of so South Korea, that is relevant. And most of the product inputs in the, uh, into the production, they are also available to all the countries that are trade. So... This is one aspect. Second route is to, uh, through the greater output and employment, is to expand the domestic market and thus the aggregate demand. So how we can expand domestic market India? 
So this can be done by recognizing the economy produces both food, non-agricultural goods and services. And these are placed differently in relation to the consumption needs in India. So if food can be produced at lower cost, the real income hai of the majority of Indian households will increase. Ho sakti hai. Basically, we are talking agricultural sector reforms. Ki baat kar rahe yeah, even food processing industry ki bhi agar hum baat kare ki wahan pe agar cost of production kam ho jayegi to jo real wages hain logo ki real income hain that would increase but yahan pe ek aur challenge hai yahan pe sirf ek yahi factor nahi hai ki agar hum cost of production reduce kar denge to it would be definite ki real income increase hogi hi hogi kyunki another challenge is inflation so this is one thing jo malab, this is again one part of the reform jo baat ho rahi hai ki domestic market ko hum expand kar sakte hain by lowering the cost of production which would increase the real income and hence jo logo ki you know buying capacity hai that would increase so this is one simple step jo yahan suggest kiya gaya hai so these are all the things jab hum employment ki baat karte to those strategies yahan pe jo mention ki gayi hain that is important for us in this entire article So emerging technologies ki agar hum baat kare, so we are talking about artificial intelligence and how it is being manifested in different ways, its unethical usage ki agar hum baat karo ya dark patterns mein baat karo and deep fakes ki hum baat karo. So this is one broader theme jo hum yaha leke chalenge. So yaha basically we are seeing even from the perspective of Indian Air Force, we were talking about ki artificial intelligence obviously 100% replace nahi kar sakta hai. So Indian Air Force is also using AI, cyber and virtual reality to address operational, logistical and training needs. So how we are basically putting AI to use, how we are basically leveraging the benefits associated with it. So ek ye example ho gaya. Then... Emerging technologies is just the latest fad. Fad means the latest fashion. Instead, most accounts of the Russia-Ukraine war, they attest to the old-fashioned dominance of artillery, maneuver warfare, and infantry tactics. So more conceptual level, however, emerging technologies, they represent a dilemma that militaries have faced since time immemorial. How best how to best respond to a particular change. Matlab, again, aap kitsi particular ya technological change ke miya baat kar rahe So how to best adapt to that and mitigate the challenges and the risks associated with a particular technology. And effectively integrating the emerging technologies, it requires the military to work more closely with the civilians than ever before. So collaborative defense is the keyword that we can take from here. And collaborative defense, basically military partners, they can again build collaboration and integration with scientists, academics, experts, basically technologists, entrepreneurs. And apart from this, um, Indian military's focus is emerging on the technologies that is not new. So again, if we talk about the 1990s, those time pe jo technologies thi, we were adopting to that also drone platforms. Ke hum us time pe baat karte the. So military leaders, they have recognized cyber threat also. This is another challenge. Information warfare. And indigenous space program, if we talk about India in the space sector ke context, mein, so India has also launched communication satellites to improve the military communications capabilities also. So these are the, you know, basically new technologies or technological adaptations in case of India. So this is not something new. This has been, again, in the context of just as new technologies emerge. Hoti gai, how Indian military got reshaped, how it basically got restructured. So how we basically strengthened our security infrastructure we can say so we have the defense cyber agency also defense space agency to address the threats from new domains so we have established these also so what has been the change in approach so first is the jointness which is defined as interoperability between three services 
it remains problematic because right now we have not implemented this thing when we talk about the integrated command. So chief of defense staff has an explicit mandate to create joint theater commands also. And apart from this, like we've been working upon this, but still it is not been implemented as of now. So fully realizing the potential of emerging technologies requires altering existing organizations and Jomari conventional approach. Hai. So unko modify karna, adapting to technological changes, unko fit karna, ensuring ki it is strengthening our position, strengthening our infrastructure, not creating a threat and uh, easy it, it obviously technology helps in easily dealing and countering those threats also so this is specially germane in the defense production agar hum baat kare private sector collaboration wider industry collaboration so that's important so current efforts into defense reforms in india has put the military on the road to perhaps its biggest transformation yet Realizing the promise of this vision would require greater willingness to engage with the talent that resides outside existing defense organizations. So even we can demographic dividend ki bhi baat kar sakte and how even STEM sector can help us. So Bangladesh may the government workers are on protest. Why? So Bangladesh world ka second largest exporter hai of fast fashion after China accounting for 85% of the country's export earnings of around $55 billion 2022. Mein. So 85% of export earnings Bangladesh ki aati hai from textile exports. Yeah, fast fashion export. 4,000 odd manufacturing facilities in this sector they are largely small and medium enterprises basically the rural women ko majorly employment deti hai. so garment worker unions jo hai, they have rejected more than 50 percent raise in the minimum wage jo ki recently abhi current sheikh hasina government ne proposed kiya tha because they say that it is too little and it is too late so they are basically demanding more hike So their demand is this much amount. So how ye pata hona important hai? So India Australia 2 plus 2 dialogue was there. So we have a relationship in which there is great deal of strategic trust and ability to freely discuss sensitive issues. And Australia has taken principal stand on India Canada row also. Capital of Australia is Canberra. It will always respect India's sovereignty. So Indo-Pacific region may when we talk about India Australia ties. So Quad is one regional organization where we are, both the countries are members and we are on talks basically as far as comprehensive economic cooperation agreement is concerned. So we have to look or consi countries ke saath we have the comprehensive economic cooperation agreement already signed. So basically is may we see ki effectively 85% jo tariff free coverage hai, that would be implemented would be a part of it. So matlab ki economic cooperation ko hum aur kaise strengthen and resilient or trustful bana sakte so for that we are having this dedicated agreement so vena convention this we discussed in the context of india canada ties ne so have we saw ki india basically a question raised kiya gaya tha so this is there and Indian diaspora in Australia, an important role definitely. So here we see that large Indian diaspora, which is second largest in Australia. So it is basically fastest growing and part of what drives the relationship is our people. So people to people ties and the exchanges, cultural exchanges play an important role as far as India-Australia ties is concerned.
So this cartoon is depicting the situation in the state of Manipur. So here you can see basically security personnel sleeping and the person, we can say a tribal person, calling it to be anarchy, would be a seeing ki, uh, you know, ASFA is implemented there. On the other side, it is, we have seen off late ki tribal community, they are demanding self-rule now. So they are basically demanding separation from the plain regions or jape jo majority community, meaty community reside karti hai Manipur state mein. So draft National Pharmacy Commission bill has been released. So National Pharmacy Commission would be established again for regulation, proper monitoring and execution. So we'll be repealing the Pharmacy Act 1948. Ki jo hai. And apart from this, it aims to improve access to affordable, high quality, high standard pharmacy education and ensure availability of pharmacy professionals nationwide. So yesterday we were talking about hair care ke reforms. Ho sakte. So we discussed one of the reforms to be ki one drug inspector ke under basically 50 units hi aane again for effective monitoring and auditing. And again, to mentor, maintain the quality standards of the drugs being produced. So, Bill encourages professionals to integrate the latest research into their work. So, role of research and development is going to be very important. Pharmacy sector may contribute to research, uphold high ethical standards. And we also talked about key, uh, the percentage of GDP that is very minimum, which is almost negligible in case of India, which we uh, you know, allocate karte for research and development. So that needs to be increased again as a part of reform. So when we talk about India's dependence on coal thermal power plants for electricity generation, so we basically need to quickly move towards phasing down and then phasing out of the coal. So more finance is needed for that. So United Nations Conference of Parties 28, it is being held in Dubai. And Panchamri targets Shomare, nearly 500 gigawatts of renewable energy. We have the target ki 2030 tak at least itni hamari install capacity honi chahiye for production of renewable energy. So we are looking for a sustainable alternative fuel source in case of India. So for the time being, we'll be relying upon coal and Again, short term ke perspective, se agar hum baat bhi kare, toh dependence on coal is increasing. It is not stable or decrease, nahi ho rahe, rather it is increasing. And carbon emissions, they need to be cut by 43% of 2019 level. This is also one of the targets. Apart from this, So electric grid jo hoga, it was capable of handling large loads of renewable power. That is an expensive exercise if you want to really ensure this jo hamari, uh, connectivity hai with the electricity grid or jo renewable energy. Hai. So that also requires heavy capital investment. So it is going to be an uh, expensive exercise. International finance is needed. So you can see China's role also, Joe Israel Hamas war chalra. China welcomes the Arab foreign minister for talks on the Gaza war. So in Arab and Islamic world, basically they're trying to end the war in Gaza as soon as possible. And the tour aims to push for a ceasefire and seek lasting peace in the region.
सो चाइना इज कीन टू एक्सटेंड द म्यांमार इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर टू श्रीलंका सो हम जनरली बहुत ज्यादा बात करते हैं चाइना पाकिस्तान इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर की कल हमने बात करी थी चैलेंजेस फाइनेंशियल चैलेंजेस लैक ऑफ ट्रस्ट बाय दी पाकिस्तानी नेशनल्स इन दिस प्रोजेक्ट सो बिकॉज ऑफ दिस दी प्रोजेक्ट इज टॉल सो म्यांमार इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर की भी हम बात कर सकते हैं अगेन हाउ दैट वुड बी अगेन इन सर्कलिंग इंडिया इन द इंडियन ओशन एंड चाइना विशेज टू एक्सटेंड दिस टू श्रीलंका चाइना म्यांमार इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर टू श्रीलंका कंट्रीज and they have highlighted this thing this is a part of bri project in south asia so this is again india given these threats which is associated with the rising presence of china in the indian ocean uh, under the pearl of ocean theory so india is strengthening the maritime security where we are seeing ki even india is under uh, the neighborhood neighborhood first policy also we are strengthening our ties be it in case of maldives or sri lanka jo hum infrastructural aid provide kar rahe hain uh, to these countries and uh, we know about ki jo economic crisis was there in sri lanka so india has played an important role providing finance also to sri lanka so here we have the bangladesh china india myanmar corridor again this is also stalled so india and bhutan sirf do aisi countries hain south asia mein that have stayed out of bri yahan pe mentioned hai india but india is not a part of it So, our gold imports they have surged to thirty one month high. So, gold prices also remain volatile. So, we often push for or encourage investments in the sovereign gold bond scheme. In the October, gold imports surged sixty percent, thirty one month high, because prices have dropped, and there was again Diwali season, festival season. Just because of this, we have seen the increased imports. So, higher imports by the world's second largest bullion consumer is India. इसकी वजह से ऑब्वियसली वी इम्पोर्ट मोर तो हमारा ट्रेड डेफिसिट भी इंक्रीज होगा पुट प्रेशर ऑन द एलिंग इंडियन रुपी ऑलरेडी वी आर सींग इंडियन रुपी इज सींग प्रेशर बिकॉज ऑफ कैपिटल आउटफ्लोस एंड वेन वील इम्पोर्ट सो मच ऑल्सो मतलब करंट अकाउंट डेफिसिट भी इंक्रीज होता है देन ऑल्सो द प्रेशर ऑन रुपी इंक्रीजेज सो इसकी वजह से द रुपी डेप्रीशिएट्स सो डेप्रीसिएशन की वजह से आर एक्सपोर्ट्स टर्न मोर कॉम्पिटेटिव इम्पोर्ट्स बिकम मोर एक्सपेंसिव विच लीड्स टू इम्पोर्टेड इन्फ्लेशन so world coal association 30 years 38 years of existence they have rebranded itself as future coal the global alliance for sustainable coal so again you can see ki the how the name is been changed in the context of the solutions or the how the situation the challenges have been growing around high fossil fuels usage and the carbon emissions because of that so this is one update affordable supply of energy to vast majority of the world's population is important needs to be reliable at the same time because energy security bahut important hai given how we are seeing even the risk associated with the disasters and uh, how it can again prove a hurdle to the the uh, basically the national grid so that's there so inclusive policy framework is needed to support the sovereign rights of all coal producing and consuming nations so india imports coal as well because india mein jo quality of coal hai that is of not high grade jiski wajah se high ash content indian domestic coal mein milta hai so india mein we are seeing tractors and farm equipments limited they have unveiled electric or hydrogen powered tractors for europe so india world ka largest tractor manufacturer hai and e30 is deal for use by municipalities logistics material handling business besides the agriculture so this is important for prelims what is e30 it is ideal for use by all these so ethanol blending with 30% basically 
that's what I can make out from E30. Okay, it is a type of tractor not related to ethanol. So 27 horsepower E30 compact tractor is equipped with lithium-ion battery, two-speed transmission, allowing it to smoothly transition from 0 to uh, 10 km per hour and 2024 it will be sold. 55 horsepower hydrogen-powered concept tractor is equipped with Simpson combustion engine. So basically infrastructure for refueling, however, it is not yet ready. So even uh, kuch technological aspect may were still work in progress. So the Langlands program, kya hai? it is the world's biggest maths project. So it started 1967, mein, where basically this is associated with the French mathematician André Ville with a series of tentative ideas was unveiled. Basically, he wrote a letter there and during this time. So at the heart of the program is an attempt to find connections between two far lung to sorry far flung areas of mathematics number theory and harmonic analysis so number theory is the arithmetic study of the numbers and relationships between them like we have the pythagoras theorem a square plus b square plus c square so it's not other examination till important here but again we just need to know key langlands program hai so it is to a match project between number theory and harmonic analysis so basically, in dono ki beach mein kya connection hai, usko find out karne ke liye we are having this project. So basically, a view of the bridge. This is a Zealand bridge in Netherlands. So the Langlands program can be likened to building bridges across mathematical cultures with different objects and languages. So basically, yahan pe isko ek, ek, connotation हम ले सकते हैं 